Uh, this is definitely not my normal gig. Um, I'm normally standing up in front of people like Dawn, trying to persuade her to do projects or help her explain how to do projects. But uh, projects in Helsinki in Finland, what has that really got to do in terms of our understanding of sustainability and how we might act appropriately in our challenges in the UK? It takes great clients to do these sorts of projects with great foresight and we were very fortunate that Citra, who are an innovation fund in Finland, were adamant that we need to define fine for their developments in Helsinki, a new way of bringing society back into balance. So they were obviously aware that it's an important process, not just an end product, which is actually integral in actually bringing our trajectory back uh, away from uh, its current uh, format. But we have a great product, and our great product in this case is about exciting urban architecture. And this is a German engineering practice called Sauerbruck Hutton, who are trying to produce an example of urban architecture which incorporates users as a central part of uh, the project's design. But as we've heard, through many, many of the speakers today, it's actually about complex systems and how do we as engineers deal with those complexities and how do we reassemble them into pieces of uh, the built environment where we allow users to actually reduce their consumptive patterns. So what we were looking at was a series of interventions from the building scale all the way to the master planning scale but also things at the national scale as well. And how do we connect all of these interventions together to bring the totality of the project back in line with society's um, uh, uh, balance? So on this, on this slide, you can see a number of different interventions that we have in terms of lower energy building demands, uh, using timber as a, a building product rather than just concrete, uh, connecting into services rather than just systems into the building as well. So how do we connect into the, uh, the metro systems? How do we use car clubs more effectively? How do we get business to actually help us produce a built environment, an urban ideal, which is actually more, uh, it, which is going to consume less in the long run? But we talked about numbers, and here are some of the numbers, and some of them are quite striking, really, in terms of what we found out on the project, and perhaps might give us indications of how we might focus our attention into the future. So you've probably heard an awful lot about kilowatt hours, and we know an awful lot about energy and energy production through things like photovoltaics, as renewables uh, on site, and also uh, different ways of producing heat through biomass. But as we bring down the energy production in buildings, the percentage of the material that it takes and the energy it takes to build the buildings in the first place is becoming increasingly more significant. So by measuring these and putting the numbers to them, we can see that the total building impacts, it's about half the materials that go into the building and half, through low energy building design, the actual operational impacts of the building. That's the first bit, that's the first quantity, which is the building design. If we broaden out our scoping of carbon impacts, but actually to the development level, we can see that how people start to use their buildings has an increasingly significant impact as well. So if we bundle up all that building energy and we put it into one component, we can see that it's around about 20% of the total development impact as people travel to it from outside town, how they produce, you know, how they use their waste, etc. So it's becoming an increasingly small part of the total carbon account that we need to take care of. And we broaden that once more further, and we've heard a lot about our consumptive behaviour. If we actually incorporate that and try to put numbers to it, and it's very difficult because they're quite difficult issues to get down and get hard data, we can see that the building impact, the things that we are spending an awful lot of time and our energy looking at, is increasingly a small proportion of our total behaviour. So as building engineers, we're focusing on the technology of buildings, but actually what we've got to really do is start to produce overall master plans and urban ideals which actually allow users to start bringing down their consumptive patterns. That's total emissions, but as we've heard, there's also this connection to the economy. 
And what we also try to do is rather than just look at total emissions, we were looking at a trajectory towards carbon neutrality in the future and trying linking that to the economics of carbon. And at the moment, I'm afraid to say that there's no real stimulus on a building level for us to value that carbon. So we can do net present value calculations to show the paybacks of renewable investments. But if we actually account for the value of carbon as it currently stay, uh, is, it's very, very small in terms of our decision making. It'll change in the future. And what we've tried to do is rather than just look at a single event, a low building carbon design, we've also on this project looked at a two nose scenario where we can actually identify and try to enable future carbon reductions in the future by integrating systems broadly into the design. I think everybody should have heard of the classic definitions of sustainable development in the fruit. And this is a picture of Grow Brundtland, development that needs the, uh, the needs of the uh, future without compromising our ability to meet future needs. But there's a second sentence after that, which I've highlighted here, which is about limitations and our understanding of the current state of technology and what we can actually do. And what we've found on the project is that it's very good to have an aspiration of where we want to go, but we shouldn't necessarily beat ourselves up so much all of the time to think about not getting there. We must deliver the change that we can within the reality of the projects that we're working on. And that's a really important lesson for us that we must deliver change. It's great to have the aspirations, but if we don't actually do and deliver something on each and every project, and especially in the built environment where we have, we're building a legacy which will last for many, many years, unless we change something significant each and every time we design, we're really missing out on a major opportunity. So what have we done on this project? We started off with great aspirations for many, many things, multi-storey timber design, because they have lots of timber in Finland. It covers 65% of their area. Great ideas about on-site energy. Lots of this has fallen away in the design process. And that's OK, because actually it's about a discourse and understanding what our reality is in terms of delivery. But we've ended up with some very significant elements which we think are going to uh, be replicable and show the rest of the, the master plan area which you design how they might also copy and replicate those in the future. So we have things like a timber office, which is seven stories. It's the first time that that, that will be done in Finland. We're meeting European Performance of Building Directive uh, criteria, which will come in down the line, 2018, we're meeting those now. We're showing how it can economically be done. We're reducing energy by about 40% over and above the, uh, Finland's criteria for energy, and that's already very, very low. So as we, you know, in the UK, get into more lower energy design, they've been doing it for many, many years. But also, we've actually incorporated engagements with the user. And this is where I think the significant element has been on this project. We'll look, we've engaged with a community uh, participatory design process to actually ask the users what they want out of their buildings and how they might engage with it. So it's a significant element. We have the technology, we have a bit of the economics about what we might do, but we've also engaged the user. So I suppose this is a bit of over the top for many of the younger people, but let's quote Mick Jagger in this. You can't always get what you want, but if you try hard, sometimes you might just get what you need. And sustainability is about meeting needs. Thank you very much.